Hi and welcome to this week's edition of the Pool Guy Show podcast. In this episode, I'm going to be talking to you about the three different types of pool filters. I'm going to give you an overview of the different pool filter types. And this may help you if you have a pool with this particular filter, if you do pool service, or if you're thinking about purchasing a house with a pool or building a pool. This may help you choose the right filter, right filter size, and right filter type for your pool. And this week's episode is brought to you by Riptide Pool Vacuum System. If you have a pool service route, this is a great way to pick up the large debris on the bottom of the pool very rapidly and make your day a lot shorter. You can learn more about the Riptide Pool Vacuum System at www.riptidevac.com. And Inyopools.com is a proud sponsor of this podcast show also. Inyopools.com has been helping pool owners find the right pool parts in 2001 with over 50,000 pool parts in stock. Order online today and have the parts delivered right to your door. And to mark the second season of the podcast, I've also created a dedicated website for the podcast. You can find this website at www.thepoolguypodcastshow.com. On this website, you're going to find all the previous podcasts listed. You're also going to find the YouTube version of the podcast. And you're going to find a box to contact me if you have any questions you want me to answer on the podcast show. Or if you want to be a guest on the show, you can also fill out that box. So I'm excited to add the resource of a dedicated website to the podcast to help you with all of your pool care needs. So let me go over the three types of filters. I'm going to give you an overview of the filters. I did a separate podcast already on a DE filter. So I'm going to go ahead and do a separate podcast on each of the filter types. But for this one, I'm going to do do a general overview of the three filter types. And you're going to find one of these three filters in your backyard or if you service pools on your service accounts. So the most popular type of filter varies by region. Here on the west coast, the most popular type of filter is your DE filter, our diatomaceous earth filter. This is a filter with grids inside there that you coat with diatomaceous earth. You also have the quad DE filter, which is the cartridge type DE filter. It also uses diatomaceous earth, so this this powder will coat the grids and trap all the uh, particular dirt, bacteria, and other particles and keep them from returning to the pool. The DE filter is the most efficient. It filters down to 3 microns. And before I go any further, a micron is basically a micrometer or one millionth of a meter. So if you're looking at the math equation, it's one one millionth of a meter, which is 0.00004 inches. So for a size comparison, a human blood cell is about 5 microns across. And the human hair is about 75 microns across. So a diatomaceous earth filter will filter um, better down to a the size of a blood cell. And so that's the most efficient filter. It'll filter everything out of the pool, basically. And it's one of the reasons why it's the most common filter found on the West Coast. Uh, back in the East Coast, or mainly Florida and down in that area, you're going to find a lot of cartridge filters. Cartridge filters will filter down to about 20 microns. And these are very popular in those areas. Um, And they tend to put in a smaller cartridge filter than what I would recommend. But you'll find a lot of cartridge filters in that area, in that region. And they're also getting very popular here in California on the West Coast. And a cartridge filter is basically a cloth-like material, depending on which brand of cartridge you're using. And this material will just trap the dirt and debris on there. And there's no diatomaceous earth necessary. Everything is trapped on the pleats and the cartridges themselves. And that's how the cartridge filter will filter out the dirt, bacteria, and other elements in your pool. And again, they filter down pretty good, anywhere from you know, 20 to 15 microns. And then the last type of filter is your sand filter. You're going to find the sand filter in a lot of the regions in the Midwest. You'll find it on the West Coast. And you'll find some in Florida also in that region. And the sand filter, basically, as the name states, is just a filter filled with sand. And as the water passes through the sand, all the dirt and contaminants is trapped in the sand, and it's passed back into your pool clean. The only drawback with the sand filter is it filters down to about 40 microns, which is probably the least efficient of the three filter types that I'm talking about today. If you have an above-ground pool, you'll commonly find a sand filter on your above-ground pool. 
and it's efficient enough for an above ground pool. Usually the above ground pools don't have more than four or five thousand gallons of water so a sand filter on a small body of water um, is definitely acceptable and again you if you buy an above ground pool chances are it's going to have a sand filter attached to it versus any other kind of filter. I do ha I have seen some above ground pools with cartridge filters but the most common above ground pool filter is probably a sand filter if you buy a kit at a store like Walmart or Home Depot. And you'll find sand filters on many commercial pool accounts. Uh, the reason for that is that they're really easy to maintain even though they're not quite as efficient as diatomaceous earth or cartridge filters. Since commercial accounts are running 24 hours a day in most cases, they require a large filter and a filter that's very easy to maintain. So you'll find sand filters on commercial accounts. Um, here in the United States, sand filters are very popular in a lot of the regions around the world, in Europe and South Africa. You'll find a lot of sand filters over there also. Um, so my area, I've done, I've dealt with every type of filter from sand, cartridges to the E. My pool rack consists about half of my filters are diatomaceous earth, the other half are cartridge, and I have a couple sand filters mixed in there. Again, they're not quite as popular here in California as other parts of the country. Now as far as the cleaning of the filters, the sand filter I just mentioned is pretty easy to maintain. You really never have to take this thing apart. Um, the sand is designed to last for the life of the filter, but in some cases you do have to change the sand out of the filter if it gets a lot of heavy use, a lot of dirt and particles pass through there over the years. And the sand filter basically is self-contained and all you do is backwash a sand filter um, whenever the pressure goes above the 10 psi mark, let's say a clean sand filter is at 15 psi, when the pressure gauge goes to 25 psi, then you have to backwash the sand filter and to get everything running more efficiently again. You don't want to backwash the sand filter too often because then it becomes less efficient because sand filters actually work better when there's a little bit of dirt in the filter itself. So keep that in mind also with the sand filter. So it's very easy to maintain. All you have to do is backwash it when the pressure in the filter rises as it gets dirty. Uh, the only drawback, again, with the sand filter is that it doesn't filter down nearly as good as the other filters. And you're going to get uh, not, not as crystal clear water uh, as opposed to the other types. With a diatomaceous earth D filter, you're going to notice that the water is pretty crystal clear all the time. And the cartridge filter also is going to really give you clear, crisp water. Uh, another problem with the sand filter is you start to get algae in, this, in the pool. If the pool does turn on you, it takes a lot longer for the pool to clear up with a sand filter. Um, but the sand filters do come in very large sizes, and you can get a larger sand filter than any diatomaceous earth filter. And that's one reason why commercial accounts like to use them, because you can get a really large sand filter for the pool. One thing I'll touch on real quick, I'll touch on pump sizing also in this podcast near the end about what size pump for your filter you need. With a sand filter, if you're using a very large pump, two horsepower, two and a half horsepower, and you have a relatively small sand filter, the pump may be too much for the sand filter and it may not run efficiently with a very large uh, pool pump. Sand filters are designed actually to run with a lower horsepower pump. So, you know, a very large sand filter can get away with a one horsepower pump because it's not filtering very efficiently anyway and the lower horsepower going through there will actually uh, make the sand filter work better. I know it sounds contrary to logic, but the smaller pump on a sand filter is actually, actually makes it more efficient. Now, as far as um, cleaning a D filter, you can take it apart about every six months or so depending on your region and then you're going to hose off the grids thoroughly to get the DE and dirt off of the grids. In between cleaning the DE filter, taking it apart, uh, you can backwash a DE filter. And it's kind of similar to backwashing a sand filter and a DE filter. You're going to um, eliminate a lot of the dirt and DE out of the backwash um, area of the filter. And then you're going to have to recharge the diatomaceous earth filter with DE. Um, to bring it back up to efficiency. So that's the benefit of a diatomaceous earth filter. You can actually backwash it in between breaking it down and cleaning it. A cartridge filter, on the other hand, cannot be backwashed the way it's designed. Uh, you just have to take it apart and clean it, depending on the size of the cartridge filter. If you're in an area where they have really small uh, one bullet cartridge filters, what I call them, you know, 50 square foot to 100 square foot cartridge in there, You'll probably be cleaning them once a month, taking it out, hosing it off, 
and the cartridge filter one of the drawbacks is that the cartridges wear out very rapidly so you figure you know if you have a cartridge filter and you're cleaning it once a month you probably have to replace that cartridge um, every six months to a year larger cartridge filters the cartridges will last anywhere from three to five years in there the diatomaceous earth the grids should last you anywhere from three to five years in the diatomaceous earth filter so that gives you an idea of the cartridge filter you have to kind of take it apart and clean it uh, just by hosing off the cartridge putting it back in and it's pretty easy to clean them it's just more of a hassle because you have to take it apart every time you're going to clean it versus diatomaceous earth or the sand filter where you can just backwash those particular filters let me touch on sizing of the filters real quick for you so basically you know you can't go wrong with getting a very large filter for your pool the bigger the better is kind of what I would say to you if you're looking to upgrade your pool filter or having a pool built so if you have a 20,000 gallon pool you definitely want to go with a 48 square foot or a 60 square foot diatomaceous earth filter you want to go with a large cartridge filter I prefer a 320 square foot or 480 square foot or you know 500 square foot cartridge filter and kind of give you an equivalent um, a 48 square foot D filter is about equivalent to a 300 square foot cartridge filter even though the area of the cartridge filter is much larger um, the ability for the, of the filter to clean the body of water is about equal so if you have a 20,000 gallon pool and you have a 48 square foot D filter it's a pretty much equivalent to having a 300 square foot cartridge filter in the same pool to kind of get the same amount of um, water quality and you know you would hose off and clean the cartridge filter that size cartridge filter maybe once every six months also same as the diatomaceous earth filter and you can go with a hundred square foot cartridge filter in a twenty thousand gallon pool but again it's not going to be as efficient you're going to be cleaning the filter a lot more a lot more frequently and i think the quality of the water will suffer with the smaller filter overall so again you want to get the largest filter for your size pool if you have a twenty five thousand gallon pool 30,000 gallon pool. You can get away with a 60 square foot DE filter or a 4 to 500 square foot cartridge filter on that pool. And you can kind of see the equivalence I'm going with with the cartridge and DE. Um, again, a lot of the regions like Florida, you'll have a 20,000 gallon pool with a 100 square foot cartridge filter in there. And I don't really recommend that, but they build them that way. I would rather you just get the largest filter possible. So if you have a small filter, you're having problems with algae with water quality issues you definitely want to upgrade that to a larger filter and that will solve almost all of your problems as far as sand filter sizing I'll just go with the uh, Pentair the Tagalus sand filter size so if you have a 10,000 gallon pool a 50 D filter would be equivalent to a 300 square foot cartridge filter or a 36 square foot D filter if you have a 20,000 gallon pool Again, the you know 400 square foot cartridge filter, 48 square foot D filter, and then you would get the TA60D for your sand filter. And different comp different uh, manufacturers size or brand their filters differently, but you kind of get an idea of the filter size of the sand to the cartridge to the D filter. You can also call the manufacturer, and it'll give you the equivalent. You know, 30,000. A gallon pool would be a TA100D a tagless sand filter and that would be a 60 square foot DE filter and at least a 500 square foot cartridge filter there so you kinda get the idea of that sizing the sand filter very similar to sizing a DE and also sizing the uh, cartridge filter you just want to go with the biggest filter for your size pool and that would give you the best results as far as water quality now as far as pump sizing with the filter you know with a cartridge if you have a hundred square foot cartridge filter you don't want to put a one and a half horsepower two horsepower pump on there it's just gonna be too much for that little filter but if you have a 300 square foot filter definitely a two horsepower 300 square foot cartridge filter definitely a 200 horsepower um, pump would be fine with that it's also fine with a, a 48 square foot D filter and a 60 square foot D filter if you have a 36 square foot D filter even a 48 square foot a one horsepower pump is fine with that so you, the larger the pump you'd have to have a larger filter to kind of compensate for the water flow so it's kind of a common sense thing when you go to get a filter and a pump you're gonna see the filter size and the pump size and you're gonna realize that 
for a really small filter, a very large pump is not going to be effective. For a very large filter, a very small uh, pump is not going to be effective, except in the case of a sand filter where they run actually better on a smaller horsepower pump than you would think versus a higher horsepower pump. So when you go to size, when you go to build a pool and you go to size your pump and filter, again, the rule of thumb, go with the largest filter that you can afford and go with a, a reasonable size pump for that filter. This is a 60 square foot D filter or a 320, 480 square foot a cartridge filter has such a large filtration area even a small one horsepower pump would be efficient uh, for that filter size because it's going to pump a lot of water uh, through that filter very rapidly. So even if your pool has a small uh, lower horsepower pump and motor, the larger size filter will just make it run much more efficiently. You know, it's just kind of logic. You have this big filtration area, so a lot of the water is going to move through there rapidly. So, you know, I would definitely, again, recommend the largest filter possible. Even if you don't replace your pump, if you have a smaller pump, I have a uh, 48 square foot D filter running on a 3 4 horsepower pump, and you can't even notice the difference in the um, pump velocity because the filter has such a large area and the water is moving so rapidly. So you don't have to replace your pump necessarily when you upgrade your filter to the larger filter types. So let me briefly touch on which filter types I recommend for your particular region. If you're in a desert region where you get a lot of dust in your pool, like the desert, Arizona, Nevada, or the high desert here in California, I definitely would recommend either a diatomaceous earth filter, which would be my first choice for you. However, the builders don't like putting those in because of a lot of the restrictions with the city and having to plumb the back wash valve all the way to a P-trap. Uh, I would definitely recommend a diatomaceous earth filter in that situation because they're very efficient with heavy dirt in the pool and you can backwash them frequently. The second choice, of course, then would be a cartridge filter, which I find a lot of cartridge filters out in the high desert area here in California. And probably the same goes with the desert regions of Arizona and Nevada. And the cartridge filters can take a lot of dirt um, in, in them, depending on the size. Again, you want the larger cartridge filter. And, you know, depending on if you have dust storms or wind storms, you may have to clean even a large cartridge filter every month or every couple months. And, you know, the sand filter would be the last filter I would choose for that region, just for the fact it's not very efficient. And, you know, with all that dirt in the pool, it's going to make the sand filter even less efficient. So for a desert type region, definitely diatomaceous earth filter or cartridge filter. If you have a commercial pool, of course, you want to install a sand filter. It's just very logical because you can get a very large filter and it's very easy to maintain it. Even though it's not quite as efficient, um, it's very easy to maintain a sand filter overall. And if you live in an area like me in Southern California, um, you can go with either a cartridge or DU filter. Uh, you don't, we don't get a lot of uh, dirt and dust in my region. It's mainly leaves that f will fall into the pool. So those filter types are perfectly fine. And in Florida, of course, you're going to find 99% of the filters are probably cartridge filters out that way. A lot of the pools there are screened in, um, so they don't have a lot of dust either. And so the cartridge filters are a very good choice for those regions. Um, so you can see I'm kind of biased here. I like the diatomaceous earth filters and I like the cartridge filters over the sand filter. The sand filters that I have on my pool route are kind of a pain in my opinion. It just takes more chemicals and it takes longer filtration period. And if the pools do get hit by a windstorm, it takes much longer for the water to clear up. And I really prefer the cartridge or diatomaceous earth filters over the other, uh, over the sand filter. And I would recommend if you're going to get a pool built to talk to the builder and find out which particular filter he's going to put in for you so you can kind of get the idea um, of what's best for your region. And if you have any questions about getting a filter, upgrading your filter, definitely um, email me. Again, you can go to uh, my new website for the podcast, which is www.thepoolguypodcastshow.com. And you can leave me a, a question regarding anything uh, related to this podcast and, and filter sizing. And so this is a brief overview of the three different types of filters. I'll go in more depth when I cover the sand filter in a separate podcast and also the cartridge filter. And if you need more resources, you can definitely visit my website at www.swimmingpoollearning.com. And you can also find my ebook on my website. 
My ebook I sell for $9.99, and the ebook contains a lot of information on pool chemistry, equipment, maintaining your pool. Just about everything you need to know is found in this ebook. So definitely visit my website and purchase my ebook today. If you're a pool service professional and need more one on one help, you can join me on my Patreon site. And for $10 a month, you can text message me. For $20 a month, you can text me and call me. You also get uh, to join the group text that we have going with about 45 different pool guys. You can post a question in the group text there. This is a great way to connect with me directly if you're starting out your pool business or if you need more help in your business. And I'll help you with all aspects of pricing uh, your accounts and also doing bids for commercial accounts and other anything that you run into on the pool route. I'll, I'm here to help you out. And also by joining, you get a discount on your general liability insurance. I'll also give you a free copy of the ebook. And you can also order the Riptide with a 10% discount uh, by joining my Patreon site. And again, the Riptide pool vacuum system is a great way to get large debris out of your pool very rapidly. Even if you're a homeowner and you have a pool with a lot of large debris, I would definitely recommend the Riptide for that also. You can get the Riptide vacuum head with the battery box, and it's a great way to get large debris out of the pool very rapidly. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast, and thank you for listening. Have a great rest of your week, and God bless. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show.